understanding financial accounting, the income statement, debits and credits. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and phone number and a good site where we get a lot of ideas for our presentations, principlesofaccounting.com. We want to go back to the balance sheet that we had on our prior video. We want to make a connection between that and the income statement. Here's our balance sheet looking at it from top to the bottom. Assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity and italics. If you look at the uh, note next to retained earnings, it says net income profit comes from the income statement. So if we're looking where the income statement plugs into the balance sheet, that net income or profit we talked about last time goes into that retained earnings number. We'll see more about it later. Let's talk about that income statement. You may remember from our last discussion, revenue minus expenses equals net profit. So what's revenue? Most accounting books define it as inflows from the delivery of a product or service, but it's important to know that the inflow is not necessarily cash. It's an asset, you're getting something, but it may not be cash. It could be an account receivable, somebody owes you money. An investment, somebody invests, gives you an investment of some sort, a stock or a bond. A fixed asset, maybe they give you a vehicle, a piece of equipment. And what is an asset? Something you use to make money in your business is an asset. So you have to think about it very broadly. Expenses, on the other hand, are outflows incurred to deliver a product or service. You spent something, used up something. But that outflow is not necessarily cash. It's an expense, but not necessarily cash. An example I use a lot is I ask students if their car is depreciating and are they writing a check for the depreciation? And the answer is they're not. Depreciation is an expense you recognize in the, degree, the decrease in the value of an asset, but it is a non-cash expense. You're using up something of value, but it is not cash, and you're using that up to create a profit in your business. Debits and credits. There's a term called double entry accounting. Each transaction in accounting affects at least two accounts. So here's an example. You buy $5,000 in inventory for cash. Inventory increases, cash decreases. That formula that we've seen on the prior video and on the balance sheet, assets equals liabilities plus equity, must balance. And what we mean by that is the sum of the amounts on the left of the equal sign assets must balance with those on the right, liabilities plus equity. You may post one accounting entry to numerous accounts, 10 or 12, but the formula must stay in balance. The amounts of money on each side of the equal sign must balance. We account for transactions using debits and credits, which takes us to the next slide. This takes a lot of prep work and thinking to understand debits and credits. A debit is always on the left side, regardless of the type of account. A debit always means left. And when we write out amounts of money in debits or credits, the left is always a positive number. Credit is always on the right-hand side, regardless of the type of account. Right side is negative. We put brackets around a credit when we're writing it out, and we'll see more of that in later presentations. Here's an example. You buy $5,000 of inventory in cash. Inventory increases with a debit. Cash decreases with a credit. I use this example because it is possible to have both entries on one side of the equal sign, but you'll see that one is positive and that we're subtracting that credit, one is negative, and they net out to zero. So if you look at the bottom of the page, all zeros, the formula balances. Another term, a normal account balance. When you look at financial statements, it's assumed that the balances on there, for the most part, are normal, meaning that there's a positive balance. What does that mean? An asset account has a debit, left side balance normally. Cash, for example, has a debit balance. 
a liability or equity account normally has a credit right side balance. So accounts payable would normally have a credit balance and that's considered normal. So here's another example. We buy $2,000 in inventory on credit, meaning we create a payable. So accounts payable, which is a liability account, increases with the credit. Inventory increases with a debit. So look what happens. Under assets, we have inventory, which is going to be a normal balance of a debit. Under liabilities, we have accounts payable, which is a normal balance of a credit. Now on the prior slide, uh, we had a credit on the asset side of the equal sign that had brackets around it. Once that credit moves to the right-hand side of the equal sign, it's shown as a positive. And again, our formula holds assets equals liabilities plus equity. Total of 2,000 on both sides of the equal sign. The credit balance to the right of the equation are shown as a positive. As a result, the equations balance. This debit credit issue takes a lot of time. The last two slides are something you may have to go over several times. That's the end of part two of our presentation. You'll find part three on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can register for live tutoring and chat sessions at our website, stltest.net. Here's our email address and our phone number, and we'll see you next time.